I play for University of Great Falls, the Argos. I am a senior, I graduate in May, and I am studying criminal justice with a concentration in forensic science. I had a heart attack in my sophomore year here at University of Great Falls. It was a normal day, I didn't do anything special or significant really. I was getting ready for practice, went into the gym, and all of a sudden I was standing there and it was getting harder and harder to breathe. And my first reaction was, okay, what's going on? This isn't normal. And it was getting significantly worse, so I didn't know what to do. Um, I went to go talk to the trainer, and then all of a sudden I was sitting there and I had a huge chest pain. It just hit me, and it was probably the most painful thing I've ever felt. When I got to the ER at Benefice Hospital, um, they had been notified that I was coming in, so they automatically had already started preparing for it. Dr. Waldo came in, looked at the echocardiogram, and said to me, you have three clots in your coronary artery, and we're gonna come in and take them out. And I looked at him, what? <laughs> in the cath lab, I had all the nurses trying to make me feel welcome, trying to help me. I had a lot of people trying to comfort me. I had my parents coming in the next day from Vegas. They tried to get there as soon as they could. When I woke up for my procedure, I didn't know that I had had a heart attack. Dr. Waldo came in and he had taken a, a picture of the clots. And so he came in and explained to me everything that happened. I feel like I was lucky to be here and to be around such great doctors that have helped me so much within the past two years. I first noticed something wrong uh, about six months ahead of time, about six months ago. And when I would get to the top, uh, the third floor of the parking ramp, I would feel something here that didn't feel quite right. It, I really wasn't winded, had no pain, but felt like, you know, I, hmm, I never felt that before. So the first step was a stress test. and. Uh, I thought I did pretty well on it. I got through it. I did the eight minutes I was supposed to, but uh, uh, the doc didn't agree with me. That He said, you have some issues here that we need to take a look at. And, and so I figured, okay, well, I'll probably come out of this with a stint or two. And they'll send me home in a day or two, and that'll be the end of it. I'll go back to work. Well, after the heart cath was over, and they found that I had, of my three main arteries, all three had major, major blockage in it. Uh, that uh, that that was the thing that really stunned me. I had no idea it could be that bad and I'd functioned so well so long. I got to talking to a friend of mine long distance in Tucson about what had happened. And as I was telling him what had happened the night before and all this major blockage, it was like it kicked it off because all of a sudden I started having some real issues uh, as far as pain in my chest. And, it's hard to describe how it feels, it's, it, but you know when it's happening that this isn't right and I'm, I'm in trouble here. When we arrived at the ER, uh, it was as a doctor said, uh, it would be, Dr. Gray had set up. Uh, they asked me who I was and I sat down for maybe 30 seconds, was up in the room. All of a sudden there's all these people around me sticking needles in my arm and doing things and, and uh, taking x-rays and... Well, Monday they prepped me for the operation. All I can say is I, I did my part. <laughs> I fell asleep as quick as I could, which I wanted to do. And when I woke up, it was over. It was a, then it was a quick process, actually, from, from that moment of waking up to actually the next day being out of bed and walking. And, and it's just amazing what they do at the, uh, in the cardiac unit up there. I showed up at 7.15 for the beginning of our rehearsal right here on the Mansfield stage and started conducting the opening piece and about halfway through the first uh, piece and uh, I start to sweat and uh, I start losing focus, concentration as it were and I yawned twice. I've never yawned ever during a rehearsal or performance in 32 years and I knew something was not right. I got to the end of the piece and I was gonna go back and rehearse a couple things that needed to be fixed. But instead, I elected to sit on the piano bench where the solo piano was. 
and I asked my concert master, Mary Papoulos, how do I look? She said, well, you look terrible. <laughs> and I put up my hand and I said, ladies and gentlemen, can we please take 10 minutes? And of course, the entire orchestra looks at me like something's not right because, you know, we're 20 minutes into the rehearsal. And I walked to the dressing room right off stage here. And our second clarinet player is a, uh, a woman named Dr. Sherry Rolfe and she's a retired physician. And she was right on my heels, came right behind me, put her hand on my shoulder, looked at my face and said, you're having a heart attack. By the time we arrived at the ER, it was quite intense. And they immediately set me down in a wheelchair, took me into the room that they take you into. Uh, it was immediate. I didn't really have any symptoms prior to, other than when I moved from being sedentary to, to moving quickly, like walking briskly. I could feel a little uh, bit of pressure, but then after I sat again, the pressure would subside. And I notice now that my energy is better than it had been previously. So there's, there's a connection there. But the, the staff, and I think this is really important, was very interested in my history uh, medically. I think they were uh, quite attentive to making sure I understood what had happened to me and to how uh, this was going to change my lifestyle. I was uh, inspired by the response from family and friends as to what I meant to them and that had a powerful effect that exists to this very moment. Those are just three of the hundreds of inspiring success stories for the Benefis Heart Program in recent months and years. We are here tonight to support some exciting new developments at the Heart and Vascular Institute. Something that Great Falls can be truly impressed with is the advancements in cardiac services and how Great Falls has been one of the leaders. We have had the opportunity to be very aggressive with management of patients who have heart attacks, any kind of cardiac diseases that affect the plumbing portion of the heart, but we have electricity in our heart too, and so we've not been able to truly take care of the dysrhythmias that people have, other than if their heart is too slow, we've always put pacemakers in, we've, we've put pacemakers in for years and years, or if the heart goes way too fast in a, in a rhythm that could ultimately cause that patient to die, we've placed internal cardio defibrillators, but we haven't had the ability to diagnose those rhythms that patients have had to take medicines or come into the hospital on a regular basis in order to get their heart shocked back into a normal rhythm. And so the electrophysiology program affords us the ability to map the electrical activity in the heart and then isolate those rhythm disturbance pathways and hopefully do what's called an ablation in order to take care of those rhythm disturbances. Dr. Ulrich Gray, the Heart Institute's newest specialist, explains what this means for the thousands of Montanans with heart rhythm problems. Well, electrophysiology has really transformed over the past 10 years. As an example, if we were to look back several years ago, people who had uh, tachycardias that were due to pathways and so forth, they had to be treated surgically and that would require open heart surgery. The science of electrophysiology and the technology has advanced to, to the point where we're now able to do that where you come in and walk out of the hospital the same day and with the likelihood of having a cure, a, a, a cure rate of over 95%. So we've really got state-of-the-art electrophysiology laboratory equipment but we really are missing one piece of the puzzle, and that's the cryoablation. And with the proceeds from Mayfair, we're truly hoping to have enough in order to purchase that piece of equipment. As Roxanne just mentioned, you have the opportunity here tonight to put the final piece in place so that you and your loved ones can receive truly complete cardiac care right here at home. So much time has passed, I finally feel like I can do anything that I actually put my mind to. And I look forward to the rest of my life. I look forward to the things that are in front of me. One of the things that I think is really important 
is how this story has been transmitted and shared with others. They look at me and they see me as the least likely candidate for a heart attack. It makes them wonder about themselves and examine how they live. And if they work to improve their lifestyle so they can avoid experiencing what I experienced, then I'll take a bullet for everyone.